Density. What weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks? This is a silly question, since they both weigh one pound. Sometimes people say that iron is heavier than wood, but a wooden log would outweigh a small iron nail. On the other hand, the log would float in water, while the nail would sink. What we should really say is that iron is more dense than wood. The density of an object is its mass per unit volume. So the symbol for density is rho. It's a Greek symbol that looks like a P. M is mass, capital V is volume. The SI unit for density is kilograms per cubic meter, but sometimes it's measured in grams per cubic centimeter or kilograms per liter. To convert from grams per cubic centimeter to kilograms per cubic meter, you just multiply by a thousand. For example, liquid water at standard temperature and pressure has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. Thus, a one liter water bottle contains one kilogram of the substance. A cubic meter of liquid water has a mass of a thousand kilograms, which is one metric ton, about the mass of a small car. The same mass of feathers and bricks would have very different volumes. You would need a much larger pile of feathers to weigh the same as a pile of bricks, as shown below. So here, density is mass over volume, therefore mass is density times volume. So if you have the same mass of feathers and bricks, you see here you need a large volume because it's a small density. And over here, you have a large density, therefore a small volume. A common topic on the AP2 exam is determining the density of an object or fluid experimentally. In this case, here are the quantities you can measure and the tools you would use. To determine the density of an object, you need to know the mass and volume. You can measure mass with a balance, a spring, or an electronic scale. You can measure the volume by measuring the sides or radius with a ruler and calculating it based on the shape. However, if the object has an unusual shape, you can get its volume by water displacement. For example, you can put this screw into this water and see how high the water level rises. Let's say you wanted to determine the density of clay in your lab. You can mold it into a cube and measure the sides with a ruler. To minimize error, perform multiple trials with a variety of side lengths. Make sure to weigh the clay each time. The plot of the graph of mass versus side length might look like this. The best fit line here is curved. This graph is okay, but if we linearize it, we can use the slope of the line to determine the density. How so? Well, if we plot mass on the y-axis versus the side length cubed, the graph becomes a straight line. What's more, the slope m equals the density. This is because the side length when cubed equals the volume. So here, the equation for a line is y equals mx plus b, but we're not going to have a plus b here because we're starting at the origin. The equation for mass is mass equals density times volume. So on the y-axis we have mass, on the x-axis we have volume, and you can see the slope of the line would be equal to density. Note the variable m here has two distinct meanings. This is mass, this one is slope. On the AP2 test, if there's a question that asks you to plot data, Make sure to always cover these bases. Choose good units, fill the entire graph, include a line or curve of best fit, calculate any important slopes, and label the axes. So you can, you can see all those things here. This would not be as good. So make sure you always label your axes with units, fill up the whole graph.